With so many nail files and buffers on the market, sometimes it's really difficult to know what to use and when to use it. And I also see that there's a big lack of education about how to properly use a nail file in between services and even in services themselves. So I wanted to go over all that information with you guys today on the Nail Hub. Hey guys, it's Liz from The Nail Hub and today I'm going to go over everything about nail files. I think that this is one of those basic things that we learn in beauty school, but we're told very, very basic information about it. And I think there's also a lot of misconceptions about nail files, how they should be used, and also what type of uh, service you want to incorporate in your salon setting, whether you want to be someone who tosses everything in the garbage after every client or you're gonna be sanitizing or disinfecting files in between clients. I'm gonna give you my, my two cents on that today. Um, but let's get started first with our terminology for today's video. Okay, so as an overview, real quick, I wanted to go over types of files. So we're gonna talk about the different types of files. We're going to also talk about buffers, levels of grit, what you should use and how you should use it, and, um, and how to use it through the service. For terminology, I want you guys to know what grit is. Grit is the texture on the actual nail file or buffer, and there's different levels of grit, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, there's also the terminology disinfectable when we talk about buffers and nail files, and some people um, disinfect their nail files, some people don't, but I'm gonna talk to you about the differences between the two. Emery board versus a nail file, that's important to understand what an emery board is. Uh, moon, zebra, and classic are all words that are used to describe different types of nail files, so we're going to talk about that as well. Okay, so let's get into showing different types of files, okay? So I've got a whole bunch of different files here. I'm going to start with this one, okay? So this is the thinnest file that I have here, and if I compare it to another nail file on my table, just so you guys can see the thickness comparison, okay? This particular file is actually an emery board, and emery boards are usually made out of wood, so they're gonna be a little bit less flexible, they're gonna be more firm when you're filing with them. Emery boards are also gonna be thinner, and typically emery boards are made for very tight areas or also natural nails, okay? Um, I would say also that emery boards, you'll, you'll never see them as disinfectable because since they are made out of wood, the material that's inside will actually come apart if you try to get these wet. So these are definitely one-time use type of files. This particular one has 180 a grit on both sides. So let's really quickly talk about, obviously we're talking about types of nail files. So this one is an emery board. It's made out of wood and it has this grit on it here. And if I rub up and down, I can feel the texture that's on here. So basically what this is, the grit is applied to the nail file surface and they're actually made in big sheets. So if you can imagine all these nail files all together on one sheet of material and the machine comes and stamps them out into this particular shape, that's how we get this particular nail file. The numbers on it refer to the grit. So you may have uh, learned this in school. Some people also continue to get confused because it's definitely the opposite of what we think. Um, the higher the number, it basically means the more uh, particles there are per area on the nail file. So it makes it a smoother surface when we've got more of this high number. So 180 is typically the number I use um, for gel, and I can also use this for natural nails because it's not super gritty. Uh, I, it goes higher. I've even seen nail files that goes high as 600 or 800 grit. So those are going to be very, very smooth. Um, but 180 is very standard uh, for any type of nail file or buffer. Okay. And the, the dash here, if, if we look at something that's similar. Okay. So here's a slightly different nail file. You'll see that this nail file has 180 grit on one side and 240 on the other. So one side is rougher than the other, okay? All right, so here's our emery board example, and I'll just put that up here, okay? So emery board are the thinnest. They're usually made out of wood, and they're typically used for natural nails or sometimes for uh, enhancements getting up into tight areas because they are so thin. Uh, but because they're wood, they really shouldn't be reused, 
and um, and standard grit for these is fine, which is usually 180. Okay, so let's go into a slightly different one. Okay, so I've got a different nail file here. This one has a spongy center, so inside here is kind of a spongy, foamy material, and you'll notice that this actually is much more flexible. This one is 100 grit on one side and 180 on the other. So you can see if I zoom in here. Okay. All right, so can you see how gritty it is on that side? And then if I flip it, see the grit right there? And if I flip it, see it's much smoother on this side. So this is gonna be the 100 grit side and this is gonna be the 180. And if I bring in my emery board here, you can see that that 180 looks very similar to the 180 that's on my emery board style. And you can see the difference in thickness, okay? So this file has a spongy center. It's gonna be much more flexible. It's kind of like a hybrid between an emery board and a buffer. And this one has 100 on one side and 180 on the other. The other thing that's important to note about these particular files is that they are both classic shape. Classic shape is usually what we refer to as this type of just long, um, you know, kind of a pill shape, right? It's like super, super long and rounded on the ends. This is a very, very typical shape for a nail file. It's the kind of nail files we grow up using. This is the classic shape, okay? Very similar, but just different styles. Now, if we go into a different shape, so this one is a moon file. And the reason why they call it as a moon is because it's shaped like a moon. Let me see if I can find where this is sealed. I do like the fact that these are individually sealed. I think that's a really nice presentation for the client. Um, having things individually sealed is, is just a nice added touch. But not all files come individually sealed. Most of the time they'll come in packs and I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, so this one also has a spongy center. You'll notice it has a color. And this you'll see a lot. On nail files you'll see color coding where a manufacturer might choose a particular color to refer to a particular type of nail file. Typically you'll see like pink or purple or blue um, and, uh, and those are very common so that people without having to look at the actual grit can identify their nail files just based off of the color in their drawer, okay? So this one you'll see is 120. And again, if I zoom in here for a second to show you the difference in the grit, you'll see how gritty this is. Can you see how rough that is? It looks like sandpaper, it feels like sandpaper. 120 is very, very gritty. And I would suggest that you don't use anything lower than 150 for gel. For acrylic, 120 is great. Or if you're really having a hard time removing something and you want it to come off quickly, 120 is gonna be a very aggressive type of grit. And again, if we compare that to 180, this is 180, this is 120. So you guys can see how gritty it is as the number goes down, okay? And then this is the, the 100 side. Now there is gonna be some difference in between manufacturers. So you'll find also that sometimes a 180 from a certain manufacturer feels different than a 180 from another manufacturer. And they are very, very close, but you will, you will find differences between nail files from different places, and that's perfectly normal. So 120 from this manufacturer might not be exactly the same, but you can see how gritty this is, okay? All right, the moon shape is, I think, uh, a really interesting shape for using, um, and I'll show you guys in a second about the application of how you use a moon file. But really with moon, um, a lot of us, we grew up you know, learning how to file, you know, holding everything like it's a butter knife, right? When we finally learn how to file extensions, what we actually do is we hold it more like a pencil, okay? And we're doing underhanded filing in this type of motion. And because of this curved area, it allows me to file curved areas around the cuticle area like so. I still have a straight edge on one side, so I can use a straight edge here or here if I wanna line things up. For example, if I wanna line up a sidewall like so, I still have that straight edge but going through the cuticle area, I now have that rounded shape that allows me to do curved surfaces and curved you know, areas on the nail. So you can see how that moon can kind of help me get around that area. 
With a straight file, you can do that as well, but see how it's different. You have to really kind of work to get that in there around the cuticle area. So some people prefer moon files and some people prefer classic. It really just depends on your personal preference. There's no, um, there's no you know, reason why you wouldn't be able to do a service with a classic or a moon. Uh, they're just personal preference. Okay, then we also have these diamond shaped ones. Okay, and again, individually sealed, which is nice. Okay, so this one, maybe you guys can look at it and tell me what you think this is made out of. This one's wood. We've got 180 on one side and 240 on the other, and this one has an interesting shape. So it's not like moon, and it's not like a classic file. It's kind of in between. So this one is, some people call them diamond files, and it's because it has this rhombus shape in the center. Um, you'll know it has a, notice it has a rounded tip on one end, a flat tip on the other, and it also has these curved areas here. So it's kind of a way to make these two into one shape. And again, it's personal preference. A lot of people like this because they can use this end around the cuticle area when they're prepping the nail. Some people are into that type of prep. Um, you can also use the angles around because it's curved. It'll be able to go around the cuticle area, but then you also have these flat areas where you can use it on the side walls or up underneath to be able to file a straight edge. So it's kind of a hybrid between the moon and also the classic type, okay? So now we've got that one. And again, this one, you can see it like barely flexes. It's made of wood. This one is spongy, so it's much more, like if you look at the ends, See how it's easier for me to flex that? So the spongy is gonna be more flexible, almost like a buffer, and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna align itself with the curvature of the nail more than if you use a very, very rigid file that hardly bends at all, okay? So this is more like an emery board, but it is thicker and it can be used for filing uh, artificial nails. Okay, so we've got these, all these different types here so far. So we've got our classic shape, classic. All right, so you guys can see all these different shapes, all the different grits, okay? All right, perfect. Now, last but not least, let's talk about buffers. And I've got a few buffers here. This one is probably the one that you're most familiar with. This buffer is a block buffer. So a lot of uh, the time you'll see uh, block buffer means this type of rectangular cube type shape, typically has four sides on it, all the same grit and uh, you hold it like so, and it is very squishy, and you can use it to buff the nail, okay, like so. Um, there's also sponge foamy buffers that are more like nail files. You can see this one looks like a nail file, but it is in fact a buffer. And there's also moon-shaped ones as well. There's lots of different shapes for files, for buffers, and it really just comes down to personal preference. Same thing with our brushes, when we get into brushes, there's oval, there's square. Okay, so here I've got a rectangular one, I've got a moon-shaped one, and I've also got kind of a classic, classic type of shape buffer. And you'll notice they all have different grits. So this one is 180 by 280, so one side is a little bit finer than the other. This one is 120, 180, and this one is 100, 180. But what's funny about this, and if I show you, Going back to what I was saying about the differences in manufacturers. So if I zoom in for you really quick, okay. So let's take a look at the comparison between the grits. Okay, so this one has 100. So you can see that side is definitely the 100 side. See how it's like sandpaper looking? And on here, it's a little bit smoother. Okay, so this is the 180 side. This one is, this side is 180, I can tell just by feeling it. And this side is really smooth, that's, that's the 280 side. But if we look at this as a comparison, you can kind of see that this, this buffer, the 180 is a little bit more textured than this 180, okay? And it just depends on where they're manufactured, what type of material they use for the buffer. So 180 is gonna be very, very similar across the board, but you may feel them with your finger and go, hmm, that feels rougher than this other one that's also 180, and it just depends, total personal preference, okay? Um, and same thing with something like this, sometimes the white style ones are a little bit finer than the gray. Color doesn't really mean anything, it's just what the manufacturer chooses for their buffers and their nail files. 
Um, and so you can see that we've got buffers as well. So how do we use these? Okay, well, I wanted to show you a couple of things um, about when and how we use these. And then I'll talk about care for the nail files as well. Okay, so when I'm talking about natural nails, let's pretend that my, my little trainer hand here, um, my, my trainer hand just has these plastic uh, tips on them to make them look like natural nails. But I wanted to show you with the emery board how I would use this. So I'm, if I'm gonna do a gel polish manicure on this natural nail, I'm going to just gently file the shape of the finger. I can you know, round out corners. But the nice thing about an emery board is it's very, very thin. So it'll allow me to file up underneath the sidewalls of the person's nail and because it's so thin, I can get right in there with my nail file all the way up into the cuticle area, okay? So an emery board, because it is so thin and it's very firm, it is nice for using on natural nails uh, because I want something gentle, but I want something rigid because I want to be able to perfectly shape the natural nail, all right? If I use a sponge file, I can do that as well, but you can see how much bulkier it is. So the sponge files, typically we use them for enhancements, um, but if you're doing, you know, everything from, uh, you know, filing the natural nail all the way down because you're going to extend it, I mean, you can do that absolutely with your, um, your hand files like this, the spongy type of hand files, okay? But if you are doing those natural nail services like nail polish or gel polish and you're just working with the natural nail, I do actually recommend the emery boards. I find that they're really, really nice for filing on natural nails and because they're so thin, uh, they just work really nicely in those areas. Now, if I'm prepping the nail for uh, artificial application, so like let's say I'm gonna do hard gel or something like that, um, I actually typically use my e-file and I'm gonna get into that in a later lesson. Um, e-filing, especially with cuticle work, takes a lot of practice and it's better to start with uh, a file um, to begin with. So when you're gonna come through, you know, you're gonna gently remove the shine and I just use a gentle pressure and kind of a sweeping motion. You'll notice I'm not holding my nail file like a butter knife. I'm holding it almost like a pencil. So if you pick up your nail file like a pencil and then turn your hand upside down, so like you turn your palm up, this is how you're gonna hold your nail file. So you hold it underhanded. So when you come up this side, you're able to see what you're doing. You can go through the cuticle area and then when you get to this side, if you're right-handed, when you get to this side, then you can hold it like a butter knife and come down through this side of the nail. And the whole time I'm curving the file and gently um, going through the surface of the nail, you'll also notice that I'm protecting the client's skin. So every time I'm filing, if I'm filing over here on the side, I'm gonna turn the person's hand to the side so I can see the side of their finger. I'm also gonna block their skin with my finger so that I file my finger, not theirs. And I'm gonna pull back their skin so I'm just filing on the actual nail plate itself. This is really important to practice. A lot of people, they just pick up the finger and start filing, filing, filing. You actually wanna get really up close and personal. So when I file, I bring the hand all the way up close to my face so I can see. I turn the person's finger, you know, and I turn their hand like so so I can see every angle of what I'm doing. And when I go through the nail, I'm very, very cautious around the cuticle area so that I don't accidentally cut my client, okay? So just nice and gentle and just etching the surface of the nail like so, okay? So you can see I'm starting to create some texture on there. And if your file does have a rounded end on it, you can also etch like so in little circular motions. I recommend you don't just go up and down. Up and down, I find does not do a good job of removing the natural shine. So you can use just the little rounded edge of your nail file. You can also use it to push the cuticle back and just kind of tiny, tiny circular motions to really get that natural shine off. And again, I'm using my reflection to check my work make sure that I've got all that natural shine off, but I'm barely putting any pressure on the nail, okay? I don't want to force the nail, I don't wanna hurt the nail, I just wanna remove the natural shine. And you're gonna see a teeny bit of it as it peeks through, but you can see that I've etched the surface of the nail, maybe a little bit more right here I wanna go through. So I'm gonna hold back that skin and just gently go in there with my nail file to get rid of that natural shine, okay? The natural shine is really what 
prevents our products from adhering. And even if you're using a sanding free base, like I talked about last time with our different types of base coats, I would still go through with like a nice kind of 180 grit buffer and go through the surface of the nail. I also do see people constantly using a nail file and then they go in with a buffer. But what you're doing with a buffer is you're smoothing this down and a nail, I really think for gel, you want to keep everything at about 180 grit. That has really been successful for me. If you make it too smooth, the gel has nothing to grip to and you're going to have a hard time with your adhesion. So just leave it nice and gritty like this and then you're going to go through, cleanse the nail and do all of your application techniques. But you can see just with the hand file, I'm able to do that. Okay. Um, if I have, I do have some product on here that I wanted to show you. Okay, so if I do have some product that I want to file, and I have color on here, but who cares? So I just uh, applied some product on here, and let's say I want to go in and I want to file this part of the nail right in here, this sidewall area. I typically will go in with um, a regular file, like a spongy file like so. I turn the client's hand, and while I'm doing this side of their hand, I do this finger, and then I do this finger, and then I do this finger, and then I do this finger. Okay, so while their hand is turned, I do all the sides of this nail, and then I turn the hand and I do all of this side of each nail, okay? That really helps. Rather than flipping the hand back and forth, and if I zoom out a little bit so you guys can see, Okay. Rather than constantly flipping the hand back and forth for every single finger, it's actually much faster if you do the same process on each nail and it's actually also more consistent. So when I'm filing, and again, I'm going to go through this when we start to get into actual enhancements, but when I file the actual free edge of the nail, I stop and then I do the free edge of this nail and I stop and I do the free edge of this nail. It'll keep you much more consistent. Um, when I'm also doing sidewalls, I only do the sidewall, and I'm going to use the emery board just so you guys can see since it's a little bit thinner, okay? So when we talk sidewall, this is the sidewall, just this area in here. I'm not talking about the actual shape underneath, I'm talking about just right here. Oh, that's a little focus for me. Okay, I'm just talking about right here and right here. And when I file those sidewalls, I'm only going to file this side of the sidewall and then this one and then this one and then this one. And I keep my file perfectly straight up and down. I don't put pressure into the finger. I'm actually just sawing up and down. So I'm not, I'm not pushing into the finger like so. I'm just barely filing and I'm actually kind of pushing in this way into the product. Okay. So you can again pull the skin back like so get your finger in there to protect and use as a guide, and then you can file, 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 and you do straight up and down movements and then stop, okay? So you're gonna do that through all the nails and then you're gonna come back and do this side of the nail, stop, go through all the nails, then you can do this, and then when you do the actual edge on the side edge right here, you're gonna put your nail file up underneath that so that it creates a perfectly straight line between where the nail comes out of the finger and the sidewall of the enhancement that you've created. A lot of people, what they do is they just file from the top, they put their file underneath, and they just file like this, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys what that would do if I did that. So I'm gonna file, 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 because I want these nails narrow, narrow, narrow. So I'll use my, my spongy one for this. I'm filing, and I'm filing, okay? Oh my gosh, I want these so narrow, because my client wants narrow nails. So I file, file, file. Now I'm gonna show you what happens on the side, okay? So if I don't look at what I'm doing, it creates a notch right here, okay? And if I continue doing that without looking, if I really put a lot of pressure, this is exactly what I see all the time, okay? See how I'm starting to create a notch in the actual product. So here's where the nail comes out of the finger, right here, and then I've got this little swoop up into the nail itself. So unlike these, if we look at this one, okay, your enhancements should actually come straight out and be a straight line. So if I look at like this guy, okay, can you guys see how like my real nail is here and it comes straight out, the edge comes straight out from the nail, okay? 
if I file blindly up underneath, I end up creating notches like this. And it really ends up ruining the shape of my nail. From the top, it might look okay. It might look nice and streamlined. But from the side, I'm actually weakening my nail by filing into it by not looking at it. So this is really important to actually look at what you're filing. And instead of just going crazy and using a lot of force and doing things quickly, get into a process of actually doing you know, the free edge first. And then you know, I typically start with sidewall, and I go through all 10 nails, then I do sidewall, I go through all 10 nails, then I go around the, the full uh, surface of the nail to file it. Then at the very end, once the whole nail is chalky, I do the free edge because once I have an opaque nail, and you'll see this when we get into sculpting, once I have an opaque nail, I'm actually able to see this shape and I can perfect it. But I'm always turning the client's hand so I can see what I'm working on from side to side and I'm always rotating the fingers and I'm always protecting the client's skin with my fingers. So you can tape up your fingers if you want to here and here. If you like to hand file a lot, you can do that. Um, and again, this is just about hand filing. We're not talking about e-filing today, but this is just hand filing techniques, okay? So those are good things to keep in mind when you are, um, are working on a client. The other thing I wanted to talk about is how we prevent damage to our client. So one of the most common things that happens when we're working with nail files is we end up cutting our client. I wanted to quickly talk about what you're gonna do in order to prevent that. Now, if you, um, if you remember when I was showing you guys about how the nail files are made, they're made in a big sheet of material and then the machine stamps out these shapes. So whether we're talking about this type of classic shape or we're talking about a moon shape, it's the same exact thing. They get stamped out by a machine. When that happens, typically on the very, very edge of the nail file, you'll have grit that is sticking out. And it's almost like super sharp paper mixed with grit. And that is very sharp. It can actually give you a paper cut if you're not careful. Um, and it can also very, very easily cut your client's skin. So when we're talking about the delicate skin, especially in here, so if I do my own hand, okay, this delicate skin on the sides is so easy to cut. And so we wanna be very careful not to, um, not to cut our client. So when we start, I want you guys, every time you pick up a new nail file, you're gonna prep your nail file. And a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just use another new nail file and they'll go along the edges. So you're just gonna kind of file on the edges of the nail, of the nail file, sorry, like this and you're gonna smooth this out and take off all the grit on the edge, and you're gonna do that on all four edges, because right here there's one, two, three, four edges. So you're gonna do that on all the edges. Now the disadvantage with that is that you're actually wearing out part of your nail file that is new. So the other thing I like to do is use, if you have a cuticle pusher, if you have a cuticle pusher that has this type of material on it, or there's actual nail file edge removers, but I typically just use this part of my, my cuticle pusher and I run all those edges all the way up and down the length of the nail file and you can hear it taking that off and it just takes off that rough grit that might actually cut someone. You're gonna do that every single time you pick up a brand new nail file, whether it's an emery board like this or whether it's a spongy type of nail file, remove the sharp edges before you start filing and that will really help to prevent your clients from getting cut. With buffers, that doesn't happen. With buffers, they're a spongy material, they're flexible, so there's no real need to remove the edges. But removing edges on nail files is one of the best ways you can help prevent cuts in the salon, on yourself, on clients. And, um, and we don't need the edges to be sharp. We want to be able to use the surface area of the nail file and the full length of the nail file, um, but we don't really need the edges to be sharp when we're filing on a client, okay? So that is a big, big rule. And if we go back to talk a little bit about some of our do's and don'ts, we want to remember to remove sharp edges. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about using a new nail file just to give you guys a little bit of my personal opinion. We're gonna use light, even pressure. We're gonna constantly move the hand to make sure that we're looking at the area that we're filing and get up close and personal. That's so important to make sure that you get up close and personal so you can see what you're doing. I don't recommend reusing any file or buffer, especially if you've cut a client. I don't reuse files or buffers, period. But if you ever cut someone, never reuse that file because it could have 
um, blood on it or some other issue that could be transmitted to uh, another potential client. And we don't use force when filing. We wanna use the grit of the file to do the work for us. So there's no need to use a lot of pressure. Pressure creates heat and can also hurt your, your uh, client's nail plate. And um, we don't want to file it without looking. And we also want to um, never store files for clients, okay? So let's quickly talk about, um, about not using the same file twice. All right. My personal opinion, and if you think about the fact that some of these nail files were individually wrapped, my personal opinion on this matter is that you are going to see a lot of nail files like this one that says disinfectable, okay? And depending on where you live and what rules exist in the area that you operate, some places do allow for nail files to be disinfected, which means you can spray them down with a sanitizer, let them air dry. Um, and there are some nail files that sell themselves as sanitizable or disinfectable files. Uh, what I have found is that the amount of money that this nail file costs me should actually be incorporated in the service to begin with. This should not be an extra expense for me. It should already be incorporated in the price that I charge the customer. So if every nail file costs me 75 cents, let's say, or 80 cents, I incorporate that cost in my service so that I can use a new nail file on every client. Why? Well, let's talk about disease for one. I don't like reusing nail files. Even if they can be sanitized, there is the risk that there's something on this nail file that I used on one person that could be transmitted to someone else. So every service, I toss my nail file in the garbage with the rest of my used up stuff like cotton and wipes and foils and you know table towels, all that good stuff. I toss my nail files away. So that's one of the health reasons to do that. Number two is a functionality reason, which is the grit does get worn down on nail files. And you'll see that if you're using a fresh nail file every service, you're less likely to use pressure. You're less likely to, um, to find that it takes you a long time to do the service. So your services are gonna be faster, you're gonna use less pressure, and you're gonna be more successful with your finished filing and all of your preparation because you're using a brand new file on every single client. Third reason is actually for customer service, which is, showing you know and and kind of customer marketing which is showing your client that you use a new nail file at every service really sends home a positive message with each and every client that you touch i can't tell you how much a client appreciates having a brand new nail file used on them every single service it really just elevates the way that they see you as a service professional and um, you can also allow the client to use you know the nail file if you want some people give them away I don't, I toss them in the garbage because I wanna make sure that the client doesn't end up using this improperly, especially if it's very, very gritty. They're not gonna understand how to use that properly. If it's an emery board, I definitely give it to them because they can absolutely use that on their natural nails. Um, but it is nice for clients to see that you're using a brand new nail file on them at every appointment. It just sends that nice cleanliness message home, makes them feel important, makes them feel like they're getting a fresh set of everything when they're being worked on, okay? So those are my little pieces of advice for you guys. And again, whether you use this buffer, this nail file, all of this stuff should be incorporated into your price so that you can afford to throw it away at every service. If you're finding yourself wearing out your nail files till they're bald, I think you're gonna end up seeing that there's a big difference between using a nail file, new nail file every service and reusing the same one over and over and over again. Your services, like I said, are gonna be more successful, your clients are gonna be happier, and you're gonna eliminate the risk of giving someone a bloodborne illness or some other transmittable infection, um, whether it be pseudomonas, bacteria, or fungus, or some type of thing that's affecting them. Um, now, if it's the same client and I'm gonna do a manicure and a pedicure, I typically do the manicure first. Uh, I find that feet tend to have more problems with things like fungus and stuff like that. So if you do it the opposite way, you could be transmitting something from the feet to the hands. I typically start on hands and then I can use these same files on feet and then throw them away after I'm done with the complete service. But that's my little tidbit for you guys is to elevate your services, use a brand new nail file on every single client and let them see that whole process of you having everything individually wrapped or everything nice and clean and ready for them and pulling out brand new nail files out of the drawer every single time, okay? 
I hope this helps you guys understand a little bit about more about nail files, grits, how to use them, and also how important it is to think about uh, nail files in your services. And if you guys have any questions about this video that I didn't answer, please put them below in the comments section. I would love to see what kind of questions you guys might have. I will definitely answer them again next time. And as we move through these videos, you'll see me using nail files. So you'll get a refresher on how to use nail files, particularly on specific types of products, on natural nails and sp uh, certain types of uh, parts of our services. So I think you guys are gonna really get to see how these are used, but I think having this fundamental knowledge about nail files to begin with, it's gonna help you understand everything as we move forward, okay? Thanks so much, guys. I'll be in touch again soon. And don't, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you guys can be notified when I upload my next video. All right, bye.